Welcome back. Let's continue our discussion on electronic configuration. And for the last time, we're going to wrap the concept of electronic configuration with knowing how to write boxed electronic configuration. Okay. Now, in previously, we learned how to write just free-flowing electronic configuration without any boxes. Okay. The idea is exactly the same. But when I ask you specifically to write a boxed electronic configuration or have you identify a choice that's boxed, then you have to just add a little bit of adjustments to your existing knowledge to make this happen, right? We already know the four common orbitals are SPDF, so there's no difference in it. And in chemistry, again, chemistry is so much abstract that we have to use shapes and whatever we can to get the concept across, okay? Now, an electron is typically recognized as a dot, okay? Sorry, a dot. But for box notation purposes, we're going to call an electron as either up or could be down as well, okay? I didn't put it there. I just wanted to start out by saying it can be up or down. So... We also know from our existing knowledge that S can hold two electrons, P can hold six electrons, D can hold 10, and F can hold 14. Now, when you write a free flow electronic configuration, you wouldn't need to worry about this box format, right? But when you specifically write box format, you have to remember that yes is one box, every P, is hey for instance 2p or 3p or 4p doesn't matter a p when you write 2p underneath it you have to write three consecutive boxes okay so for instance if your 2p is if you're if you're drawing a like if you're writing electronic configuration in the box format for every time you see a p you have to write three boxes okay and each box can hold a maximum of six, okay? That is each cell within the box, that is three cells, two per cell, right? Similarly, whether you're dealing with a 3D or 4D or, you know, you can keep going. But every D, every 3D or 4D is five, okay? So you draw, you draw five boxes within a long box. So one, two, three, four and five. Each cell within that can hold two. That's how we account for the 10. And similarly, if you're starting to discuss 4F, okay, and you go further, F5F, okay. I'm not going to even draw, you know, you get the idea, seven boxes, okay. Each contains a maximum of two per cell, that's seven, 14 total. Now, you cannot just, when it's, you know, six or 10 or 14, it's easy. You put one above, one, one below. What if there is three or four or any other number besides six, 10 and 14? That's when we have to create some rules. So here are the rules. You do not have to memorize since you're in the online environment, but you can, I'm gonna walk you through. As always, first you have to locate the atomic number, which is the number of electron, okay? And you have to, you can also do one thing, which I didn't say in the rules here is, you can actually write the correct electronic configuration if you are a struggling person. Okay, just like the free flow, once you have it, then it's easy to set up the box, okay? But still, there's a couple of rules we need to account for. And each orbital must, what I meant by each orbital is, each shell within the orbital must be filled before proceeding to the next, okay? This is, so this is not, this is, I've already explained, each shell can hold a maximum of two, okay? This is the most important one in the rules, okay, that distinguishes boxed from a free flow, okay? You must fill each subshell with one electron first, and then you come back and fill the subshell with one more electron, or however many is left, okay, before proceeding to the next orbital. For some of you at this point, you feel like you really want to scratch your head or probably bang, bang your head hard against the wall. I am very sorry. I didn't mean to put you in that position, but this is the reality of the situation, all right? So I'm going to keep this rule the way I've written. I'm not going to make any changes, but 
it will probably make more sense when we actually do a problem. But like I said, you, you can use this as another opportunity, just like condensed electronic configuration, to actually work on writing the correct electronic configuration in the free flow first, and then you can start to write boxes, and then we can worry about actually filling something in. All right, so let's actually do some example. All right, I picked beryllium, okay, and the atomic number is four, right? And beryllium is in the 2s band. So we start with 1s and we end with 2s. We put 2, we stop, and then we see there's 4, so we get 2. And that's the electronic config, correct electronic configuration of beryllium because it's in part of domain 1. So the rules are very straightforward. We're done. All right. Now let's go ahead and write the box boxes for each of them. So 1s. You know, for S, only one box, right? Two S, it's still an S, so one box, okay? Let me actually, I have put it up so you can see while I'm working this out. We got two, you put one up and one down, okay? One up, one down, okay? Yes, again, Writing this ahead of time really helps, but I can do it without even writing it, but I am doing this so it helps other people, okay? So let me do something else just out of the blue, so let's, let me do phosphorus, okay? Or maybe sulfur, okay? What's the electronic? The number is 16, right? So sulfur is in the 3P band, so let's write 1S, 2S, 2p, 3s, and 3p. This is again domain one, so no need to shuffle, none of that stuff. So it's two, two, six, two, stop, count, to 10, 12, and so it's four. Now we can write box, I'm gonna keep enough room. So one s, I'm gonna draw one box, two s, I'm gonna draw one box, two p, well p is three, so draw three shells one two three and again three s one box three p well it's p so draw three shells right very good now just start filling two electrons here so one up one down two here so one up one down six now this is where i want to walk you through so you see what i'm doing so one up one up one up fill all of them with first one way and then start filling down. So one, 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 so six, okay? Yes, you never have to worry, one and one. Three P four, see this is what I meant by four. So first you start with one, left to right, okay? Now we filled the three out of four, we're still left with one. The one can go in any of the three cells, but it's conventional to put it in the first. If you put it in the middle, that's still correct, but don't put it in too many places, okay? So technically that one down arrow can go to any of the three shells, but it's conventional to put it in the first shell. Does that make sense? All right, if you didn't, you're gonna have to watch this video one more time, okay? Because I'm gonna leave you with more practice problems. Now, ultimately, if you see, I'm just adding maybe an extra topping to the pizza. I'm just redesigned the pizza altogether. The four videos on writing electronic configuration for a neutral element in domain one and two for ions, cation and anion, that's all you really need to know. That is the foundation. To which we added one rule for the condensed, we added one more rule for the boxed. But if you see the hierarchy, the overall architecture remains the same, right? So I want you to practice these as you watch this clip. That's why I'm leaving practice at the end of each clip. So you can practice that with that clip rather than having to watch a whole bunch of video and then doing one practice session. It's just not very productive. All right, so, sorry. These are the ones I want you to practice. Oh, sorry, this should be CA2+. plus. Let me strike it off. Maybe I'll give you one more. Uh, 
maybe manganese two plus and maybe AU three plus. All right, well, that'll do. So this is not CA plus, it's CA two plus. And I want you to practice writing boxed electronic configuration for these. If you see, I don't give you neutral, it's I'm giving you ions. What should that tell you from a test perspective? Think about it. Well, that pretty much sums up our understanding of electronic configuration from various vantage points. And I will see you with valence orbitals and valence electrons the next time in the next video. All right, so stay tuned.